Introduction to Animal Agriculture, the Minnesota Beef Industry. Terminology and Production Systems. We'll start by defining some general terms used in the beef industry. A heifer is a female bovine or cow that has not had a calf. Once she has given birth, she becomes a cow. A steer is a castrated male bovine. Males can be aggressive toward one another, so if they're not used for breeding, they're castrated for the safety of the animals and the humans around them. A bull is a male bovine used for breeding purposes. Feeders are calves that are 7 to 11 months old. The calf has been weaned from its mother and is intended to go to a feedlot and slaughter. Yearlings are cattle that are 12 to 16 months of age. They become fed cattle, or those ready to go to slaughter. And call animals are cows or bulls that have completed their productive life in the herd. They are sent to slaughter and usually processed into ground beef. How is the beef industry segmented? Seed stock or purebred breeders are the producers who raise the breeding animals. Often these producers sell semen from their bulls or embryos from their cows to commercial cow-calf producers. Their primary product is high quality genetics for the entire beef industry. Commercial cow-calf producers are the people raising cows to produce feeder calves for feedlots. Stocker or backgrounds are people who take feeder calves for a short period of time and often raise them on grass. Once the feeders have gained some weight and reached yearling age, they are sold to feedlots. The feed yard feedlot feeder segment buys yearling calves. They'll feed them in a feedlot until the cattle reach market weight. The final segment of the industry is the packer who buys cattle from the feedlots and is responsible for slaughtering them to produce meat products. Unlike the pork and poultry industries, the beef industry has very few integrated operations where one producer or company owns all segments of the industry. Because cattle are ruminant animals raised in extensive systems that utilize pasture and forage, it would be difficult for one producer to own enough land to have a sizable integrated operation. Let's look at some of the various production segments in more detail, starting with the cow-calf producers. Commercial cow-calf operators produce 6 to 10 month steers and heifers weighing 350 to 750 pounds. They also produce cull cows and bulls, or animals that will be sent to slaughter after their productive life in the herd is over. Pasture and forage used as feed are one of the main reasons the cattle industry is not integrated with confinement operations like the swine and poultry industry. Cattle are able to process forages as a primary source of nutrients. They also have other nutrient sources including ground corn and commercial supplements. The animal holding facilities are minimal since the cattle are on pasture the majority of the year. A tight profit margin in the cow-calf industry makes it difficult for producers to invest in new barns. The primary objective is to produce as many calves as possible and grow them as fast as possible with minimal expense. To accomplish this, cows and bulls must have high fertility and proper genetics. Livestock in a cow-calf operation are usually turned out to pasture in May or June and removed by late October. There are three types of grazing systems that a commercial cow-calf producer may use. In an intensive rotational grazing setup, each cow-calf pair is allowed one to two acres of pasture. The animals are moved to a new pasture or paddock of the same area every one to two days. Rotational grazing systems use the same principle but are less intensive. Each cow-calf pair is allowed two to five acres and cows are moved to a new location every week to 10 days. Traditional grazing systems provide 5 to 20 acres of pasture per cow-calf pair. The animals stay in the same pasture during the entire grazing season. As grazing operations become more intense, the cost of operation goes up due to the need for supplements, fertilizer, more fencing supplies, and labor. But producers using intensive rotational grazing systems can produce more market animals with less land. The type of grazing system a producer uses will depend on nearby land value. The higher the price of land, the more likely producers will use some form of rotational system. 
Available labor will make a difference as it requires a lot more time to maintain an intensive rotational grazing system. During the winter months, cows may graze crop residues such as corn stalks, or they may be confined to a lot and fed diets of harvested forages like hay or corn silage. To ensure adequate nutrition, producers may also feed commercial supplements and distillers grains, a byproduct of the ethanol industry. A cow will eat enough feed to equal one and a half to two and a half percent of her body weight per day. That means a thousand pound cow will consume 15 to 25 pounds of feed per day. We'll now move on to the yearling or stalker operations. These operations buy cattle from cow-calf producers and raise them until they are 9 to 18 months old. Most of these calves are fed on grass until they reach 900 pounds. At that time, they're sold to a feed yard. Stalker operations use low-priced feed such as pasture, forage, and some minerals. Their goal is to have low disease and death rates while also keeping the cost of the livestock's weight gain low as well. The yearling stalker segment is the smallest in Minnesota. Most stalker operations in the U.S. are in the southern states where wheat pasture is more readily available. The next move for the young animals is to the feedlot. Feedlot producers buy calves that are a year to 14 months old and feed them until they reach market weight generally 1,200 to 1,400 pounds at two years of age. Feedlot producers must buy feeder cattle from the stocker backgrounder to fill their feed yards. Of the three segments discussed, feedlots typically have the most invested in facilities since the cattle are being housed in a confined area. One of the primary inputs in a feedlot operation is the feed, including grain, byproducts, and commercial supplements. The objectives for the feedlot producer are to produce cattle that have a good average daily gain and excellent feed efficiency. This reduces the feed input and increases the producer's profit per head they sell. Feeders also strive to produce cattle with a quality carcass with the correct amount of fat, marbling, and muscling for the consumer. Feedlot cattle are fed in confinement. Because they're fed diets that include low quality forage, the feed efficiency is less than other livestock species. It takes five to eight pounds of feed to get one pound of weight gain in feedlot cattle and they'll gain three to five pounds per day. Like a cow, feedlot cattle will eat nearly two to three percent of their body weight in feed every day. That means a thousand pound steer will eat up to thirty pounds of feed per day. Cattle are fed 90 to 200 days depending on their age and weight when they enter the feedlot. There are two types of feedlot facilities in Minnesota. The first is an open lot or fenced in pen with no roof. Typically there is a windbreak to the north and west to protect the animals from prevailing winds during winter months. Although open lots are very common in Minnesota, open lots are more prevalent in the southern plains states where the weather is warmer. Confinement barns are becoming more popular in the northern states. Cattle might be 100% enclosed in this type of structure. More likely, the facility will provide one-third shelter and two-thirds exposure to the outdoors on a concrete slab. Inside or outside, there needs to be adequate ventilation. In most cases, one side of the barn has a curtain that can be opened or closed to control airflow. Often, the entire south side will be open to allow plenty of ventilation in the barn. Trends in beef production. The number of cattle operations in the U.S. are on the decline, with beef cattle operations declining more slowly. Unlike all other major livestock sectors, the size of beef cow operations have remained fairly constant, and the industry remains less concentrated than other livestock industries. Cattle production in Minnesota is mostly a family-based business. 85% of Minnesota cattle are raised by families who've been at it for more than a quarter century. In 2003, Minnesota ranked 12th in cattle production, producing nearly 1.5 billion pounds of meat. Here's where the beef and dairy industries cross over. This meat production includes meat from both beef and dairy cattle. Once a dairy cow has finished her productive life in the herd, she is sold to slaughter. 
Bull calves born on dairy farms are also an important part of the beef industry. They are castrated and fed in feedlots for slaughter, just like beef cattle. Minnesota's cattle are valued at an estimated $1.9 billion, making them one of the largest segments of the state's animal agriculture. The beef cow industry is more widely scattered across the nation than other livestock sectors, again generally located where land values are low and grassland is prevalent. Where are the cows in Minnesota? Primarily, they're near low-quality land that cannot be farmed such as southeast and north-central Minnesota, where rolling hills make crop farming difficult. Who owns the cow herds in Minnesota? There are more than 15,000 cow-calf operations in the North Star State. Most of the cow-calf operations in Minnesota are small. 43% of Minnesota cow-calf herds have less than 50 head. Less than 4% of the herds have more than 500. Cows are most likely not the primary source of income on these smaller farms. Either the producer has an off-farm job, or they have a diversified operation where they may raise crops and other livestock species. The cows in diversified herds use crop waste and land that cannot be farmed. Cattle production may also be a hobby for some smaller producers. The majority of cattle feedlots in the U.S. are in the southern plain states like Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, and Nebraska. The drier air is better for raising cattle outdoors. The movement of the cattle feeding industry to the southern plains started in the 1970s. Since then, the packing industry has also moved to be near the feedlots. Where are the cattle feedlots in Minnesota? You'll find them mostly near the grain producing regions in the southern third of the state. This is also close to the packing plants. Now let's look at some of the industry economics. Cattle prices typically follow a 10-year cycle. The calf, feeder, and fed cattle markets follow each other up and down this economic roller coaster. When cattle producers are enjoying high prices, they have more disposable income coming into their operation. Thus, they're more likely to make improvements to their farms when times are good. When prices drop, profits drop, leaving less money for improvements. Cattle price fluctuations are quickly reflected in the industry's profitability. This graph shows the economic cycle of the cattle industry. The red bars are the net return per cow over the last 20 to 25 years. The net return per cow follows the 10-year cycle. When cattle prices are high, producers have a greater return. When cattle prices are low, returns are lower or even negative. Half the time, cattle producers are losing money on their operations or at best breaking even. Producers willing to reinvest in cow facilities look first at their returns. How do feedlots affect the rural economy? Let's look at a typical 2,500 head facility in southwestern Minnesota. This feedlot will spend $2 million a year in cattle purchases from the surrounding area. In addition, roughly 65000 will be spent on mechanical repairs and maintenance. $12,000 will be spent on real estate taxes and $115,000 per year on banking interest. Minnesota's annual cattle market of approximately 1 million head results in a net return to the state of about one-half million dollars. Beef Industry Issues Here's a look at some of the issues facing the Minnesota beef industry. We were seeing a steady decline in demand, but the high protein diet craze and other factors have actually caused an increase in consumer acceptance of beef. Land use regulations are becoming more strict and complex for producers who are expanding or building feedlots. Land values are a factor. Traditionally, cattle have been raised on land that cannot be used for other purposes. But as we continue to see urban sprawl, people are building more and more houses on the gently rolling hills where cattle once grazed. Commercial cow-calf producers cannot afford to pay the same price for land as housing developers. Disease such as mad cow and bovine tuberculosis, or TB, continue to threaten the beef industry. Minnesota lost their TB-free status in 2006 due to an outbreak in northwest Minnesota. The National Animal ID program is trying to address the issue of disease in the U.S. with a 48-hour traceback capability. However, registering every livestock premises in the U.S. is an enormous task, 
and the technology and ability to trace every animal movement is years away from reality. Increasing input costs also play a role. The 10-year cattle cycle that producers are often operating under provide break-even costs at best. Thus, any increase in inputs, such as the price of corn, will decrease the already narrow profit margin. Despite any bad news, there are several factors that will continue to make Minnesota competitive in the beef industry. Minnesota has good availability of low-cost feeds, such as corn, soybeans, and ethanol byproducts. Cow-calf operations are able to make use of marginal cropland through grazing. The climate in southwest Minnesota is similar to that on the High Plains, making it a fine place for cattle feedlots. Many packing plants moved to the southern plains in the 70s, which means that some Minnesota-raised cattle have to be shipped across state lines for processing. If the current processing plants in Minnesota could increase capacity, the value of the feedlot industry in Minnesota would increase as well. For more information about the Minnesota beef industry, visit the University of Minnesota Beef Industry website at www.extension.umn.edu slash beef or the Minnesota Cattlemen's Association at www.mnsca.org. 